In the previous lesson, we learned how to predict the products of ozonolysis. And here we are going to learn how to predict the reactants of an ozonolysis reaction if we are given products. So we will learn how to go back. Let's go ahead and read this problem and then we will do all the fun parts with, with it. It's like a little puzzle. So here it says, ozonolysis of alkenes can give the carbonyl product shown in the illustration that follows. Supply an alkene that can produce the carbonyl compound shown, specify the nature of the workup, whether it's oxidative or whether it went under uh, oxidating or reducting condi reductive conditions. So let's go ahead and we will start with A. Now just a brief reminder, usually when we have ozonolysis and we have a double bond, let's say something like this, we basically break in the middle and we get and we get um, and we add two oxygens to either side. So these are our products. Now if we're given the product, how do we how do we go back? So let's go ahead and let's start with A. Um, a only gives us one molecule with a double bond O. We know that after we do ozonolysis, we, we should be getting two double bond O's. So what happened here? Well, this must have been two of these reactions, so we must have two of these. What I suggest doing is I'm suggesting putting the two molecules in such a way as to, for their double bond O's to be right next to each other. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's say this is one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. Double bond O here. And then I will draw another double bond O here. Okay. So I just basically put the, my two molecules together. I have realized that I must have two of these because ozonolysis always gives me two or more double bond O's and I only have one. So I start with two and then I put my oxygens right next to each other so that I know where the double bond came from. So this double bond must have been here. And so we're going to show the product. And I'm sorry for the noise you might hear. There is some construction outside, but this must be my product for A. Uh, now, here it asks whether A happened under oxidation or whether the workup step was oxidation or reduction. And I know that um, for reduction, uh, the difference between reduction and oxidation is that my aldehydes, double bond O, I would see double bond OHs under reduction, but under oxidation, I would see double bond OOHs, carboxylic acid. Here, I can't really tell because I don't have any aldehydes or carboxylic acids. So for this reaction, it could be either oxidation or reduction. So I will say either. Either one would work here. And let's look at B. In B, they give us two different molecules. So again, and we see two double bond O's. So again, what I'm going to do is I will twist it in such a way as to align my double bond O's. This is my hydrogen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Always make sure my number of carbons is correct. And that must have been my double bond. That's where, so now... This is where my double bond was that I broke before. So basically, my molecule must have been this. And because I see that the product has an aldehyde double bond OH, I know that this one had reduction. Let's go ahead and go to C, and we will start with one. So here we see two double bond O's, and they're on the same molecule. How could that happen? Well, if you had a ring, um, you will break the ring, but you will still end up with only one molecule. So that this could have been my double bond 
and I'm drawing it very poorly, but I'm going to number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And basically, I I didn't show here, I didn't align the double bond O's, but basically the bond will be, remember where the double bond O's are, that's where the double bond was and it was broken to give you two halves. So the double bond must have been between one and six. And I numbered it to know what kind of ring I'm going to make. So my ring will have six carbons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a six carbon ring. And I'm going to number it one, two, three, four, five, six. You can number it any way you want. And I know that my double bond must be between carbon one and carbon six. So this is my double bond. These OHs do not matter because we know that under oxidative conditions we have carboxylic acids. So this must have been with oxidation step, second step. So this must have been under oxidation. But uh, so when I break it, I will get double bond O on each side. And because those were aldehydes, they will become carboxylic acid uh, uh, with the oxidation conditions. So that's my number one. Number one, it says this molecule comes from um, a reactant, an alkene that has six carbons. So this must have been it. Now let's look at number two. It says that the molecule comes from an alkene. This product comes from an alkene that had 12 carbons. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this so we don't get confused. And how could this be 12 carbons? Well, we already calculated that there are six carbons in this. So in order to come from something that had 12 carbons, we must have had two of these. So I'm going to redraw it. Going to number one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm going to draw my oxygens a little ugly. Um, for the sixth one, I will draw it going this way, even though that's not correct, just so that I can align it well. On top, what I can do is on top of it, I can draw another molecule, another molecule, same one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And my carbon number one, again, it had double one O, O, H, and six had double one O, O, H. Okay, so um, what I'm doing again is I noticed that there are 12 carbons in the starting material, in the second starting material, and I noticed that my product only has six carbons, so that means there were two of these products. So I drew out two of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going, and I, and the way I drew it out, a little ugly, but I made sure to align my oxygen so I know where the double bonds come from. So now I can say, okay, I had a double bond here and I had a double bond here. So those were my double bonds. Now to draw it more correctly, and what about OHs, by the way, we don't care, right? Because under the conditions of oxidation in the second step, that's how we get OHs, but they used to be hydrogens. So we really don't care that we had these OHs here. So now how would our molecule look like? This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have, uh, we have six membered half ring and then it has a double bond here, and on six it has another double bond, and then again, okay, this doesn't look that great, but again, we have one, two, three, four, okay, I am missing carbon, so let's redraw. So we go like this, like this, like this, like this, and like this. And hopefully I will not one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, and that would be my correct molecule. A little bit more complicated, but let's just remind ourselves that it's that we start with 12 carbons, so we took two of our products, same molecules, and we aligned the double bond O's to see where the double bonds were in our alkene, and then we redrew the molecule so it's a big ring. Okay, let's go ahead and do the last one, part D. So in part D, we have three products. We have the molecule on the left, 
and two of these so again what I'm going to do actually I can just do it on here I'm just going to align two of these with line molecules so I will put one here okay we took care of one and then where the other one will go it will go here and this because I see OH I see carboxylic acid this must have been with oxidation as well now all I need to do now that my double bond O's are aligned I just make a double bond double bond that's where my double bond and I'm going to number one two three four five six and I'm going to draw one two three four five six one has a double bond so we will show it what is this double bond it's next it's with a carbon this molecule has only one carbon so there's one carbon there so i won't show it or i could write ch2 but i don't have to so i won't um but there's one carbon here and the number six also is now attached by a double bond to another carbon and that's my molecule I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Uh, I am sorry about the construction noises and I look forward to seeing you in more organic chemistry and general chemistry lessons and to um, enjoy this uh, chemistry together and to learn how to solve it easily and to have a lot of fun with it. Thank you.